Welcome back into Pioneer Basketball with Devin Carter. I'm Brian Staten, joined by Pioneer Coach Devin Carter. The season has come to an end, and at the time that we're recording this, it's been a while since the season has come to an end for reasons for that. You go on recruiting trips, you do those certain types of things. But it was a season not necessarily historic. It may have been historic for the South Atlantic Conference, but for this coach, a 10-win improvement from one year to the next, third best in the country. You know, you win 16 games this year, Coach. You finished tied for sixth in the league as, as we look at the standings where you have Carson Newman, Wingate. You've got two teams that were dominant in, yeah. in our league, and not only in our league, but also in our region. Yeah, um, we had a situation this year where the league was probably as good as I've seen it in a long time. Um, you know, there were really no gimme games in the league, and so you had to make sure you br brought your A game every single day. Uh, you look at Carson Newman and Wingate, and those are two programs that really have, have, have you know, stood out this year, and um, they just breezed through our league. And uh, I think that's a testament to our league. Uh, Coach Mincy was telling us the other day that we were the rated right the fourth toughest conference in the country, mm -hmm. um, and on the East Coast, I think we were the second. So I think that really sticks out and stands out as far as our league top to bottom because we have a situation now where everybody in our league is kind of getting their footing. We've had some coaching turnarounds, and now those coaches are recruiting at a high level, mm -hmm. and our league is, is, is benefiting because of it. It's a, a Carson Newman team that won the regional, went to the Elite Eight, so we had another one of those years. Uh, the players is another thing that I look at. We're going to look at our all-conference team, and you're going to see it top-heavy with a lot of the teams that finished in the top four. Mm -hmm. And then we've got two honorable mention girls and Casey Johnson, uh, Sydney Wilson. Mm -hmm. We believe are probably second-teamers or better, right. yet can't get to that team because of the depth of our league. Right. And, you know, our league is just, like I said, is just really deep at every position. Uh, a lot of skilled players in the league, a lot of, of really quality bigs in the league. And um, I, I throw a third one in there. I mean, I thought um, at times this year, Mia Long was all-conference performer as well. I mean, she was shooting as a guard over 50% for multiple stretches throughout the season. And so, you know, you look at, at Mia and Sydney and, and Casey, and those girls have had uh, huge ball games uh, throughout the course of the year. Um, and, and then to, to just be honorable mention, you know, that just, you know, it just shows the depth of, of the league because I believe those girls are second teamers at, at least. And, um, you know, but when you have the Harris Prices and Michael Westers and, and Lysenko's and Exes of, uh, of the league, it's a tough league. It's yeah. tough to get up in there. All right. For the what, first time in at least 10 years, you've got dual players of the year, and that was Harris Price along with Marta Mashenko. And again, Carson Newman advancing all the way to the regional final, getting to the Elite Eight, hosting there at Holt Fieldhouse. So we talked a lot about that. We talked mm -hmm. about your team, how good we were in turning teams over, and Carson Newman was just better. Mm -hmm. um, team steals, uh, team three-pointers. Uh, Sydney Wilson was the statistical champion this year, uh, finishing there. But you talk about steals and you talk about uh, field goal percentage. We're finishing in the top three in a lot of those numbers, which yeah. we haven't been in a long time. But, mm -hmm. you know, to get there – We've got a team like Carson Newman that returns everybody yeah. next year. Wingate's going to maybe struggle a little bit trying to figure out how to replace Mashenko, but you know they will. Yeah. They'll, they'll oh, figure yeah. that out. Anderson's going to have a tough time replacing Dillard, but you know they will um, and replace some of these kids. And then we've got a bunch of players that are coming back. So we take a look at some of the, the season highlights through here. We start 4-0. We make the tournament for the first time in five years. A lot of, a lot of first in a long time for yeah. this team. And then you turn around, look, we've got the main core coming back. Let's focus in on the end, though. Um, lost four straight coming down. And I think we go back to that 11-day stretch that we took off. Mm -hmm. um, how much did that affect the ending of our season? Well, I, I, I think it affected us a little bit just from a conditioning standpoint because, you know, during that 11 days off, we really weren't able to practice like talking about it just because we had kids that were sick. And some days we'd have – four kids in practice. Uh, some days we have six. Uh, some days we, you know, we wouldn't be able to practice at all. Um, you know, we had to split it up into like individuals and stuff like that. And it was just uh, really tough because I felt like our conditioning wasn't quite the same going down the stretch. And you look at situations where uh, at the end of the year, I think we showed a lot of resiliency in our team because you look at uh, the Winget game, for instance. Mm -hmm. We're down 20 in that game, we cut it to one. Mm -hmm. You look at Anderson, we were down 20 in that game, we cut it to one. 
um, just situations where we've kind of got off to a sluggish start and, and usually in all year our conditioning has been our skill that was our skill uh, we were always in better shape than our opponents so you look at situations like that I felt like we just kind of we, we would make the run to get back in it and then we just weren't able to close and so uh, obviously taking that many days off in the middle of a, of a season down the stretch was really tough it was really tough and as a coach I mean that's the first time I've ever been a part of something like that as right. a player uh, as a coach I never really seen that before so it was tough for us to navigate and you know credit to our girls I mean in, in those games that I mentioned you had a chance to lay down yeah. and we didn't and, and we we battled back in every last single one of them so uh, hopefully uh, our, our, our entire team will get the flu shot next year. Yeah. We, talk, even did that. <laughs> we talked about the start. It was 4-0. You come up with a, an exhibition win against a Division One school in that stretch as well, um, making the conference tournament. And then we've got a lot of new faces that had come in this season. Kendrea Duke was one that you didn't get at the beginning of the year. She kind of joined you midseason. Yeah. Uh, you'll lose McCupidon along with lovely Locklear were big time contributors early. They kind of disappeared middle of the season some way, but then really had a strong finish. Yeah. Uh, what did you learn uh, about this team and, and, and how to handle them going forward? Because those are the name, those names I mentioned. Everybody that we've mentioned so far is coming back next year. Yeah, um, I learned just that we tell our kids all the time that you got to stay the course. And I think that, you know, Lovely in particular and, and uh, Yolisma in particular were girls that, you know, went through that experience this year because you can tell them, tell them, tell them, but until they go through it, it's really, you know, tough to understand. Um, I think they saw the importance of that. Uh, Lovely Lockler hit a stretch in the middle of the year where she really struggled. And, you know, I tell recruits this now. Uh, she, I think she scored in double figures six out of the last seven games yeah, or something impressive. like that. Impressive. Um, and the thing about it was middle of the year, she, she got down a little bit. She stopped working. And um, just to put it out there, she stopped working. Um, we had a conversation about it, and um, she grew up a little bit. Uh, she got back in the gym. She started coming to extra work. She started, you know, taking her basketball vitamins. And um, shortly thereafter, her game reflected that, and that, that – finish to the end of the year is what you saw. That's that's lovely Locklear putting time in and work, and uh, her game reflected that. Um, I go back to Anderson when we were down 20 in that ball game. She single-handedly put us on her back and brought us back in that ball game. And so, you know, we cut it to a one-possession game solely because she rallied off, I think, about 10 points straight mm -hmm. during, during that stretch. So, um, you know, with, with, with everybody coming back, you know, I, I think that our group has been uh, a little bit – more focused. They've always been focused, but they're different this spring um, because they know how close they were. Uh, they know that a couple of small things cost us during the year. Um, I tell people all the time we had the third largest turnaround in the country. We probably should have had the biggest turnaround in the country mm -hmm. uh, because we were right there. Uh, we were two ball games away from that, I, I think. Um, but we should have had the largest turnaround in the country, and those small things came back to bite us, and, and our kids understand that. Uh, we've discussed that, and I think uh, that their focus has been phenomenal in the spring. Uh, we just got to stay the course. We just got to continue to work. Uh, very rarely does a coach have the opportunity to bring everybody back that right. contributed to your roster. And so now it's just about finishing this, this recruiting period off strong uh, with kids that are going to push them for their positions. Uh, you know, we can't have any mouth breathers. We've got to have some kids that are going to come in and fight for playing time too. So I think once we do that, we have a chance to move this program uh, with another big step next year. Big step this year for sure for this Pioneer basketball team as they finish with the 16 wins plus 10 on the year. Also making the South Atlanta Conference Tournament something they haven't done as a program since 2013. You could say it's on the up and up for sure, but also this South Atlanta Conference on the up and up. What do they say? You got to run with the big dogs. Right. So you got to have some dogs to run with. That's and right. the Pioneers are definitely uh, getting those to come to this school. For Pioneer coach Devin Carter and everybody involved with the uh, Pioneer basketball season this year, many thanks to you guys in the office of Dom Donnelly, Jim Miller, Nick Forsberg, and everybody that's been a part of Pioneer basketball this season. I'm Brian Staden. And until next season, go Pioneers.